better burning. Yeah, I guess so. But the bowl's uh so the idea of what we're doing today is making bundles that then you can dry and these are a lot easier to handle than individual sticks. Is that the size they're gonna end up being? No, they're we're gonna end up being the largest size that we can handle okay. comfortably. Okay. So yeah because some of the caragana is at least half that big. Yeah. Glove? Yeah. Oh, thanks. I'm pretty. I'm usually pretty. You get to the point where you need gloves in the pro light boxes. Cool. Frustrated. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to give it up. It's Siberian, man. It it, it has a will to life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, but they, not as not they won't be sh so short. But it makes it easy to do these. The saw horses are probably also. I was gonna come and see if I need to take a load over my. My garlic yeah. is up. Uh, that's why I was just doing a half. Awesome. Half. Yeah. So I've got to get in there and see them up. Okay. Make sure the milk doesn't have them down. It, it rains so every night. Fire starting tricks. <laughs> Alright, hang on a he second. He did on his belt! Do it again. Do it again. Yeah, that'd be good. That was the best one. Just light the fire. Can I just light the fire? I don't think we're there yet, son. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. The first lesson in biochar. <laughs> How to crack your. Hey, let's try it on the wood. <laughs> Alright, so let's talk about this fire here. And you can do it on the ground. Um, you can you can do a top lit stack or something like that. You can do it in a pit, and this kind of uh, represents the shape of a pit. It could be a dirt pit. It could be a dirt pit, and uh, if you have a just a straight circle, you can make charcoal that way. But you end up um, it's difficult to get all the wood burned in the bottom corner, and so coming in with the sides both helps to get the all the all the wood turned to charcoal without any, leaving brands, unburned wood, and also tends to reflect the heat back up to where the, the fires happen. So, well, yeah. gas stove. Uh, so when we bought the house, still kind of green. that juniper actually Is it? had a yeah. whole other layer. That's stuff you brought, right? Touching yeah. the exhaust of the house. Just wanted to catch the whole place on fire. And, he, and they don't even stop, they didn't even change that to sell the house. We would cut them wow. down, but like just a no million idea. birds just No them. clue. No clue at all. It's just crazy. Yeah. So what's the uh, moisture content yeah, of the wood lawn, that's optimal? Because you're never going to get it below like 10, yeah. 10 percent. You never want it more than 20, yeah, but yeah, as dry as possible. But, but and yeah. stupid liars. Uh huh. It's just. But we had and, the house and that's why the best April. time to make uh, charcoal is in the fall. We really thought about taking those out. Yeah. I don't care about how they look. As long as you water them. An air well, they get watered with the lawn. With yeah, as long as you well, So, I mean, this stuff, yeah, it's still a little green. So, what do you think this is going to spell for the biochar that's produced? It's so small, though. If it was thicker and green, it'd be. Yeah, sure, sure. Tough, How much light it? More feet out. That's the, the Can we just light it? Well, I'm going to show how to light it. Yeah, you got to be careful, man. You got to make sure you do it correctly. You know exactly how. You know exactly how? Yeah, I've done it before. You made biochar? No. You know what else is a serious fire hazard? Is uh, like, yes, I've made ashes, charcoal, and then it flowers all. Hot fire burning on top. So it gets so hot that I can't hold the pipe anymore. And then 
it'll be a smokeless fire from that point. I don't so know why, why is it smokeless from that point? Because all the so wood, the wood is being generated by the heat radiating into the wood, and it's radiating mm -hmm. only downstream into the airflow. Whereas most fires, people try to put the fire in the bottom and use the flame to heat the wood and generate the smoke. Right. But because the smoke is upwind of most of the flame, a lot of smoke escapes. So when you drive, we, how many fires did we see? Smoke plumes driving around the country. All, avoid, all over. All avoidable with just simple. Even the, the big debris just, piles, it's avoidable? Yes, yes. Just turn the fire By top upside, lighting them? By top lighting them. Mm -hmm. Now in a big pile. Karen, I want you further back, please. In a big pile, in order to keep the embers from falling to the bottom, you put a, a platform about two-thirds of the way up in the pile to give the top part a chance to get super hot before the embers drop down and you lose that. that. A platform of like flat wood? Yeah, or, or branches crisscross, just a denser... At the bottom of your burn pile? At two-thirds of the way up into oh. it. Yeah, so that you top light it and the embers that are generated don't no just more drop cannon. through to the bottom of the pile. Pick this matches up off the ground, you're wasting. Look what happened. I said that's too close. Pick up one at a time. And be mindful about what you're doing. Okay. And, and we don't see enough videos of this of this particular technique. And this wasn't a particular, particularly great version of it. What you can do is just build a small fire in the bottom of these pans, cone kilns, and then just build up from it. And in many ways, that's what I'm doing. But whatever, whenever you start the fire, it's really nice to do a top lid. And so there's a little smoke right now, but what you're saying is it's not going to amount to much. Yeah. side, so that the wind picks up here, and the fire moves that way towards the fuel. And so we'll get less smoke by putting where the fire is most concentrated, putting that on the downwind side. Huh. That was, that was just to get the airflow going enough so that the fire got hot enough to start distilling, heat distilling wood gas farther away from where the flame was okay. to generate more smoke, to generate the, the higher flame, to get it through that early transition point where the flame might go out. So if you, if you have fuel that's wet, if it's really cold out, this comes in really handy to get you to the point where you don't have to worry about the fire going out. Okay. Different elevations, they'll have shorter and longer uh, flues, it makes a big difference. And the airspeed increases okay. um, logarithmically as you increase the, the height of the, of the flue. My house was designed for convection heating and the flues going to the second floor are narrower and smaller than the ones for the first floor because when the heat gets to the second one it has so much it already has uh, some momentum and it increases the momentum and if you didn't have a differential size in a convection system the top floor would really heat up so oh and so and, if it's a straight stovepipe all the way through that second floor yeah it stays it's, it gets uber hot upstairs yes yeah and, <laughs> and if you were to drill little holes in here and that flow is to suck air in by the venturi effect it would suck in more air at the top relative to a hole at the bottom there which be... would make the fire burn even hotter yeah right? yeah this is okay. completely exhausted that's when you put out the fire and, and hold the charcoal and so what do you how do you know that the wood gas is completely exhausted? The, it won't support a flame anymore and it won't mm -hmm. smoke there won't be any oh. smoke coming from it you need to put the fire out uh, use your boot, use a shovel full of soil, use water, snow. You probably don't want to use too much water, I guess. It won't take water once it's getting to uh, yeah, embers. Embers are easy out. to put out. A flaming fire is Can really it? difficult to put out. Fill it to the, to the point where we had a bed of... The way to do it from this point is to put larger and larger sticks on it, fill it up with embers, and then start putting smaller and smaller sticks on it to, to ignite the the smoke and I didn't do any of that so this is oh. this is we're cutting it off early is that where the larger kiln is better no they, I could have done it with this one it was just this was such a short demonstration that I just decided oh. our glee is giving us his kiln making business for making this smoke out of it so laying a layer across the top has just been the brilliant way to do it once it really once it, 
once it's uh, charred enough to break in the middle, then I can push it down and move sure. to the next layer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. And it gets hotter and hotter, and then you put something that pops out smoke, and it cools it off because the oxygen yeah. is burning the smoke instead of yeah. right. In and totally. Up. Yeah. This is uh, superior. Yeah, that seems like a better option. Hey, we're doing right. Okay, somebody else take over. I want to. I want to. <laughs> okay. Getting it out of there and getting a shovel on it and seeing where the pieces that don't break. Then you know that those aren't charcoal, so you can set those aside and reburn them. I don't feel heat. Yeah. Excellent. I think we got it. it doesn't take that much water to put out embers. So that was a fair bit of water, though. Yeah, it did take. <laughs> <laughs> that was I a fair bit. I mean, my that's. Pee. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, we were eating it here earlier. You were not. Yeah, we all yeah, yeah. dipped into the. Uh, That's pretty glorious looking stuff. Yeah. Yeah, her and Glory are still good friends. Can I try it? You want to eat it? No, I want to try it. Hey, why don't you get some out and hold it in your hand? Okay, look at his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, show it in your hand. See? Nice. Yeah. It actually feels lovely. It feels like a great soil element. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the best toothpaste. Yeah.